Thank you. Through the really chair, um, just two questions. One is um, uh, speed change, and the second is um, how is it easier? Yeah. Okay. Um, speed of change. Um, so far, in, the, in our experience, uh, I think we might, we might see a couple, um, one or two over year, or if there was a spike. Now that's over. We're talking spikes in annual or monthly averages. I'm not talking spikes during the day, um, but that's what we'd be looking for in the main. I think. In, in the uh, There is a table that outlines the last five years of results. So if I just take one site randomly, in 2012 we had um, 34, and in 2013 it was 32, 2014 it was 32, 2015 it was 32. So these are the average. Yeah. So they, they, they don't fluctuate easily. That's an average over the year. Yes. And if it goes higher than where it's safe, designated as being safe, and yeah. people can be put at risk, but it wouldn't show as the figure of an annual. I think, I think the point that I'm trying to make here is that if there was a significant yeah. increase in houses like the one that's just been mentioned there, or any other, is there, on your list there, is, it, is there an area where it's got a sudden increase in? Um, a housing estate or something. Is there a sort of, have you got an example where you could see a trend and where it rises? No, it isn't something that uh, we've, we've looked at to be honest. No, <laughs> um, no we, I don't have any statistics on how, how that would vary depending on housing developments or how many houses we would need and can to increase them because it's not. Just to, just to add to that, we do, we are talking to colleagues at uh, the city of and there's trouble and we're doing some modelling for us on predicting um, levels of air pollution. Um, so we'll target our, our measurement, measurements in the correct area. Um, and that we are um, thinking will help us greatly with things like planning applications uh, for, for, the, for the future. It is something that we're mindful of. Um, we mentioned the Liverpool City region are doing a exhibition um, uh, a, a review of air quality within the region and they are taking into account major developments in that. So they're, they're looking forward, as well as looking at the data that we have, they're looking at some of the some of the planning issues, river waters and, and, and other major developments, and it's something that we can Planning and being brought to the health of the we're looking at that in greater detail. But we haven't noticed any great spikes as a result of the development, but it, you know, obviously you can all add it together. I mean, when we talk about problems in traffic and transportation, um, we do consider you know, the increase in traffic. Can I, can I just ask a question? Yeah, um, yeah uh, my, my concern is this. this if this is two, this is a 240, 250 home development, which is, let's say on average is going to get around say 340 cars, 230 cars. And they do a journey to work every morning in the back, going past two grounds, going straight up to the A41, which is already clearly, you know, on the part of the take water line, but it's going to add to that sort of level. Um, but we don't, we, there's no way you can say whether that was going to be detrimental to the air quality over a period of time or, or yes. And without looking at yeah, that specific development, I, I can't I'll tell you whether an air quality uh, review is necessary as part of the planning process um, uh, or uh, what concessions were added to the railways. Um, I think it would be for that scale of development, I think it would be unlikely that it would have a significant difference but I would need to look at that. Thank you. I'll be very quick, Chair. Um, I think um, what I need to brought up here earlier about planning and that, I mean, can give a good example, really. Um, in Upton, at the same very roundabout, we just had a new development there of about 140 houses. That's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And a, a number of residents before.
before the development did come to be, we were talking about the air quality and that. Because around that area, you know, you've got a fire station, you've got a police station, you've got a driving centre, uh, you've got the Upton Bypass, you've got two schools that are where traffic falls from it. And I was asking the question that particular time, how many cars will be coming out of this and that? And I didn't feel I got a sufficiently good answer, but I'm not opposed to building houses, we need the houses. The number of cars that are caught, I mean, I, was, I can't believe that area isn't above the level. Because the number of cars that are going into Sainsbury's, McDonald's, their home base, the number of uh, uh, buses that go through there, the number of cars and, and ambulances that go up to our hall from that very, very space, it seems to be the most polluted area in the whole of, of, of the authority. But having built the new houses, no one seemed to be able to say, well, this air quality has changed or is similar or whatever. So, you know, um, I don't know if the planning people have visited that area at the time, but um, it's a good place to build houses. But, but I was worried about, again, 200, 300 extra cars, um, you know, sort of coming out of the space. Well, then I'm sure Ken will tell you that part of the report we just had a quick check to see what the nearest monitoring point is. Uh, we've got um, two monitoring points, but they're at the bottom of the road, and so at the, the roundabout, the new junction we were talking about before, where the Hour Park Hotel is. We have two monitoring points there, one actually on a house and Nearby. I think we need one nearby. Yes, um, but they're at 28, 30 level. I, I would have brought it down much nearer to, you know, where the police station is. Yeah. 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 If you did come back to the presentation, what we wanted to say was that obviously we've got a scalable structure of measurements. What we, through the, through the, uh, the ASM group that Ken mentioned, we want to review our station. We're not talking about Suddenly creating 500 stations, there's not, there's not the capacity, there's not the resources. That was, in terms of new sites, the, the, the system needs to be more dynamic, and hopefully, that came out of the presentation. That's it, my intention moving forward. Right. Can I go back to Singleton Avenue and the school? Yeah. 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 You all went to the church road and then there was the church road. So that's quite a congested area. And it was consistently mostly within the danger level. Is it possible then that taking on a daily basis, and don't interrupt me with, with anything while I go through it, on a daily basis, could it be that at certain peak times it, um, it exceeds? The reason I ask this is because the children who are in school will be in the playground, therefore more exposed, at peak time. So it could be that those children are daily exposed to the highest level. And I'm wondering, if that is the case, is there anywhere, like you've mentioned uh, John Moore's, where you can get equipment that tells you on a daily basis, I mean I know there is that equipment because I know the work that's been done on, on the effect it has on children. And I'm, I'm just concerned because I would never really have thought of Singleton Avenue as being that bad against other areas. Thank you for the brilliant chair. Um, looking at the statistic, I'll deal with the numbers first and then the actual practical what we can do. Um, numbers wise, the level um, is, is 40 is the, the European government and the UK government, so that, that is the, uh, the figure, the, the, uh, the trigger level for an annual yeah. of the uh, yeah. If that reach, if when we measure it, we reach a level of 60, then the guidance says, well, actually, you'll be looking at some really dangerous levels and you need to do um, some more. That said, you're obviously right to say that the very young and the very old are more susceptible to it. To a quality, and, and what we want to do is to try and reduce those um, as far as possible. So, well, the so point I'm making is that if you are taking it over a month, there could be times of the day 
when it is always over 60. And those times will probably be peak times, which will be the times when the children are there. So you virtually say that those children are constantly exposed to 60 at when they are outside in their school yard. And that's what I'm asking you. I appreciate the 40 and everything else. I think I'm, you know, I might be thick, but I've got that bit. What I'm asking you is, are there times when it is consistently over the 40, like say between quarter past eight and nine o'clock? Or, which is, if your children are in breakfast club, which a lot of children are, and that school does have a breakfast club, and they're outside, they will have total exposure. And as I understand it from the figures, you only need an hour's exposure a day. That's why I'm asking if it is possible, under the way you do it, that at a certain time of day, every day during the week, it's fine. That's the question I'm asking. Thank you. The safe level, well, the hourly level is 200. Right. Okay, that's a dangerous level. Don't get me wrong, we don't want to be reaching dangerous levels right. at least this water. So the dangerous level where they say you breach the power in at least 200, if, if we were getting levels of 60 in our normal measurements, yeah. that, would, that would suggest, according to the government, that we need to get down there and start looking for those. So that it suggests it could be suggest that, yes, if it reaches 60, it suggests that might be getting to the levels. However, you, you suggested that you've had equipment with that school. Yeah, mine's a very basic fundamental question. In terms of water pollution, that's being measured in real time now, and it's not based on historic data. I think, given the situation we're in as an authority, where our figures are based on a month's accruement of data, as opposed to data in real time. And given the issue nationally, is there any moves afoot from government to actually change the way the pollution is measured and actually to try and achieve that in real time or historic data that's maybe only three or four hours old rather than stuff based on an average over a month. Uh, thank you for the three um, Chair. I'm not aware of any changes um, that the government is proposing. Um, that said, obviously, as an authority, I said that we're reviewing what we want to and where, and, and the use of real-time equipment. Um, we, we would look at that case. We're looking at, perhaps, the ability to use it in, in schools. That's part of our review. Um, in, in any event, so we have a that will give up really good time um, uh, feedback. However, obviously, it's expensive and costly to do uh, um, looking into it to see if there's, if there's a business case, but nationally, there isn't a proposal. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks very much.
So that then we least sets us to a base budget of 61.944 million and against that budget just under 62 million. Uh, at this, uh, after the first quarter, we've got uh, some emerging pressures and we're in a forecast overspend position of around about a million pounds against that working 62 million pound budget. Uh, those pressures essentially relate to uh, three areas. The first one uh, relates to a uh, half a million pound in waste and environment. So members may remember that we had a budget option related to efficiencies from the different contracts. So uh, we're struggling to achieve that. But uh, uh, the, the team in our commissioning support uh, services, from the Nicky Butterworth, they're looking at a variety of options uh, and ways of actually um, making up that position with our alternative <coughs> ideas. So we're hoping to recover that. Uh, and then the second, uh, the second area uh, relates to um, leisure and sport and recreation. And as we've talked about in the report there, uh, we have uh, been a delay in some operational change in the Woodchurch Leisure Centre uh, and at Westcote Marine Lake as well. Uh, and thirdly, obviously it does link to some of the debate we've had tonight. We've got a pressure around, uh, you know, between leisure and parks and countryside, around bringing an income, and there's a reference there to um, income around, uh, you know, golf, golf courses and the quality of the golf offerings. So uh, I do know historically that we, we had issues around golf income that we've worked on, uh, but obviously, you know, as of now, um, you know, I think we're continuing to work hard and um, you know, income around leisure and golf is something that you know, certainly from that report, I think officers are keeping a close eye on. And some of the issues we touched on tonight do obviously just link in with the financial report that you get here. Have we taken the question, Chair? Okay. So, Mr. Chair, I'm going to take the next
Um, again, we know from the report so that the, the survey work to understand the extent of work that's needed has obviously been done to put the price tag against it and actually put that figure in the budget. In terms of the detail of that, uh, again, I need to speak to colleagues in delivery and, uh, and just find out some more detailed information around the work programme. I'm very happy to uh, circulate that Because we were promised that it must be four months ago. It's a long time to put off residents until after. Okay, thank you. And Adam? Thanks, Chair. The first point was the second one is have we got time to go for the new business plan for the uh, waste management? Yeah, just, just briefly for you, Chair. So, so this is a saving. Um, the, the premise of the of the initial saving was around it's it's all about the different contract. It's it's a big contract for the council, and the premise was to find uh, was to find efficiencies, you know, practical efficiencies within that contract. Um, all I know is at the moment is that um, that has been proving a more difficult exercise, or it's taking longer than planned. Just, Nicky Butterworth and the Commission support team are looking at a number of options that they are in discussion with BIFA. Uh, and I, I understand we'll be you know, reporting uh, you know, back internally um, you know, to, uh, to look at which one of those are viable. Again, with the aim of there's a half a million pound pressure there actually addressing that, bringing in compensatory savings to cover it. Here, it is the pledges within the environment theme. Uh, <coughs> it's 
an overview of progress, those indicate supporting measures in terms of the detailed action plans and progress against those. That obviously goes to quite a lot more pages, but that is available on the, uh, on the council's website and is published, published there for, for, uh, you know, for members to, uh, to, to see that. Um, and, and as I say, so we've got appendix one there as that, uh, as that overview report. Um, and uh, just to take any questions on that. But, uh, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. 